How does it look? Can you all hear me? Yes, doctor. Okay, let's get started. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm going to talk about the analysis of effects of external factors on the cognitive benefit and amelioration after intensive rhythmic therapy in patients with Parkinson's disease. Uh, why does it not continue? So recent research showed that cognitive abilities may be maintained or even improved in patients with Parkinson's disease directly after an intensive rhythmic intervention. So turning to the effect of rhythm, when listening to music, cortical activity has been measured in the auditory cortex, in the motor cortex, and even in deeper emotional or memory and mesolimbic reward structures. Now rhythm itself may induce rhythmic entrainment, that means cause someone to move to or is synchronized to movement to a given beat, and evoke emotions, reduce depression and anxiety. It may recall memories and may feel rewarding as it stimulates the vestibular and limbic system. Therefore, providing therapy on the basis of rhythmic cues may be a multifaceted effect in diseased conditions. Yet, the question arises, what other factors may influence whether or not a PD patient benefits from rhythmic therapy? So, we investigated to how much extent external factors attribute to whether or not a PD patient benefits from a rhythmic intervention. And we looked at different external factors such as age, sex, level of education, smoking and or drinking behavior, amount of weekly sport, current cognitive stages measured with a Montreal cognitive assessment, current PD condition measured with the UPDRS, depression measured with a back depression inventories, L-dopa dosage, and having a deep brain, brain stimulation or not. So the statistical procedures, there were um, general in a model with backwards elimination. Now, since beneficial therapy effects were found at four weeks being directly after the intensive therapy program in word retrieval, that means the category semantic and phonemic categories, as well as in working memory, we just selected these variables to run the GVM. And the analysis were conducted with SPSS and all results were seen as significant if um, P.05. So moving on to the sample description. Now the analysis is based on data involving 26 patients from a uh, previous research with PD, having received 45 minutes long therapy sessions three times per week and for four weeks in total. Rhythmic interventions were either based on a speech language or a balanced mobility approach, and both interventions were like on rhythmic cues only. So the sample description was, um, it consisted of 14 males and 12 females, of which had 15 DBS and 11 non-DBS. The age in years was 68. Um, education in years was 16.6. The MOCA score 26.9, um, being a way of any cutoff um, for cognitive decline. And BD depression was 7.7, again, way off uh, from any cutoff. Now the UBDS score was 30 um, 37.8, oh, excuse me. PD disease duration was about 10 years. Levodosage, um, levodopa dosage was 540. Smoking, there were 15 non-smokers and 11 smokers. Drinking behavior, there were um, 14 participants who drank less than five drinks and 12 more than five. And for sport, there were 20 participants who did less than five hours of sport per week and six did more. Now turning to the results, um, it was basically age and sport were suggested to explain up to 39% of the variance. And um, interestingly, there was a high proportion of unknown variables um, that we didn't measure for that. Now turning to the semantic uh, results, there is education, sport and BDI. These were um, suggested to explain up to 51% of the variance. And there was again, a high proportion of unknown variables. 
Now, turning to results for working memory, age, education, and sport explain to 69.5% of the variants, um, with again, education as the highest, followed by age and then sport. And there's only a little proportion of unknown variables. Now, turning to the discussion, previous literature reports that age is a contributing factor in terms of verbal fluency, as seen here in the phonemic word retrieval. And sport has an effect on mono, motor and non-motor symptoms in Parkinson's disease, and it first enhances motivation and quality of life. And education relates to late life um, cognitive functioning. Now, please see that all these references are numbered here and given at the end of the um, presentation in a separate slide. Turning now to the limitations. Now, the whole 26 patients is quite small and there are many different variables that would weaken the model itself. So for regression analysis, um, it is assumed that cause and effect relationship between the variables remains unchanged. Yet, if there's so such a small sample and many different variables, as soon as you change and um, twist a bit, then um, results are, are weakened and um, effect sizes are also weakened. So findings cannot be taken as conclusive. Furthermore, mo most interesting, if someone has been musical early in life, then this may possibly also be beneficial for rhythmic therapies. And also other factors such as social life embedded in activity um, and active family life that would stimulate um, communication and thus be a further benef beneficial factor in terms of working memory or word retrieval. So turning to the conclusion, although there is a still high proportion of unknown contributing factors, um, it can still be said that age and level of education, as well as the amount of weekly sport may be a valuable um, contributing factor for responsiveness to rhythmic cues. Thank you for attention. And here you can see all the references.